when historians uh, don't have quite the information they want, they sometimes try to create it by interviewing those who were involved in the experiences that they're trying to understand. And here to help us understand oral history is Zahir Ali, who is the oral historian at Brooklyn Historical Society. Uh, we're going to start, if you don't mind, just by talking a little bit about what's good about oral history. What does it do that uh, otherwise doesn't get done? Well, I think you kind of set it up that one of the things that, of course, historians rely on to reconstruct the past are archival documents, letters, newspaper clippings, um, government documents, and, and when we look at the past, um, these kinds of traditional archival documents have privileged certain people. They have privileged people who have had um, positions of power, they have privileged people who have had access to media, they have privileged people who have had certain educational attainments so that they can write and, and you know, they don't tell the full story. And so these people have tended to be men in the past, they have tended to be white in the past, they have tended to come from middle or upper classes. And so if we really want to construct the past in its fullness, we have to look elsewhere for other sources. Um, the use of oral history um, kind of coincides. I mean, the, 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 the first, or people consider the birth of oral history as a discipline in 1948 with a program established at Columbia University. Uh, but oral histories had been in, in existence long before that. This is the naming of a practice that had already been in existence, right? Um, it, it becomes really popular, I think, and coincides with the rise of social history, uh, which is a, a move away from uh, what people called great man history, um, a move away from kind of political history or economic history, and a, what towards what people call bottom-up history. History is told by ordinary people, uh, a way of understanding these historic forces uh, as they were experienced by everyday people. And oral history uh, gives us an opportunity to access that kind of interior life that we, we don't see in the archives. And why is this particularly useful for women's history? Oral history is particularly useful for women's history for, I think, for many reasons. One is um, women have tended to be one of the most marginalized or excluded or silenced uh, groups in the traditional archives. Um, another reason why oral history is really useful for um, helping us understand women's history is the nature of oral history as a practice um, involves listening. And the principles of listening include um, being open, being solicitous, um, allowing the other person's voice uh, to be heard, to, be prim to have primary uh, role in shaping the narrative. And these are the ways that, I mean, these are the ways that really open up spaces for the experiences of women. And, 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 and I think in a way that, um, you know, even oral history is, is a kind of shared authority uh, between the interviewer and the narrator. So it's, there's a cooperative spirit. And I think um, traditionally, the kind of ways that people have um, thought of competing voices or dominant voices um, have served, have been a disservice to including the voices of women. So, you know, the a kind of phrase that we like to use is that we're not giving voice to the voiceless because these people have had voices, but we are is giving ears to the earless. Yes. And so really uh, making these voices audible is the job of the oral historian. Wonderful. So, are there any disadvantages to using oral history? Are there any booby traps that well, we should be aware of? Yeah, one, you know, so one of the challenges, of course, with oral history is you're relying on the human memory, which is not perfect. Um, and so, we look at oral histories as kind of simultaneously documenting two things at once. One, an oral history is an attempt to document the past through recollection. Another, the oral history documents the contemporary moment when the recollection is taking place, mm. right? And so you are, you are hearing someone recalling past events, but you're hearing them recall those past events in the context 
of the moment that they're making that memory. And so um, we, we don't really look at it as a flaw. We actually look at it as an added bonus um, that an oral history is an attempt to document two times at two moments at once. And really it, it raises a, um, a flag to emphasize us as historians. We, we like to think as historians when we're reconstructing the past that we are working in a context-free space. That we're just pulling these past facts together and, and telling this story. But the truth of the matter is we make decisions about what of the past to prioritize in reconstructing a narrative based on whatever our contemporary interest or motive or contextual you know uh, situation would is is and so i think the oral history the oral history uh and the practice of oral history makes that more transparent that i think most historians um are willing to admit or to deal with the great historian e h carr once said that depending on where the historian decides to fish in the pond he or she will catch certain kinds of Absolutely. Fish, so we Absolutely. make those decisions. Yes.